Chances are, if it happened in science fiction, it's only a matter of time before it becomes like a real thing, you know? Hey everyone, I'm your host Rachel Fisher and welcome back to MA. We're gonna do some crazy sciencey things today. You know, from fingerprints to communication to travel. There are so many things on this list that show dreams can come true. Join me as I count down our list of top 10 inventions straight out of science fiction. Beam me up, Scotty. Or wait, beam me up, Chris. Number 10, biometrics. Okay. First question, out of all three Back to the Futures, which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Mine, I think, is the third. That feels like a big statement because I love all three of them passionately, but I just, I was a sucker for Doc and Clara. I just thought they were so cute. I also appreciate a Western. But in the second one, you may recall a subtle moment where Biff pays for his taxi by using his thumb. At the time, it just looked like just another exaggerated prediction of the future, but it actually is becoming a thing and it kind of already is. From using the thumb pad on your phone to unlock it and using Apple and Google Pay, biometrics are everywhere and we will be be taking it a step further. Businesses in Europe are already making chipping a voluntary option for identification. By chipping, I mean microchips that carry our information being inserted into our wrists or I don't know wherever else you want it. We could use them to pay for coffee, dinner, groceries, or even to get into our house or car, or even if we go to the hospital, they can just boop, scan us, and they know what we're allergic to. Though we aren't exactly what Marty saw when he came to the future, we are well on our way to getting there. Just, just hopefully not as much neon. So much neon. You know? Number nine, the sonic screwdriver. I love this list because he knew it was gonna give me the opportunity to talk about Doctor Who. But this one is definitely surprising. For everyone who is not up to snuff on the Whovian world, the sonic screwdriver is the trademark device of the doctor. A non-violent tool that uses sonic vibrations to hack, unlock, and diagnose health issues as well. It very often does the impossible, making the idea of its existence kind of unrealistic. Or is it? It turns out we are actually pretty close to inventing something remarkably close to it. Bruce Drinkwater, professor of ultrasonics working with the Big Bang Group, has some ideas and I quote, Doctor Who is renowned for bending the rules of science, but technology has radically moved on since the doc first stepped out of his TARDIS in the 60s. Whilst a fully functioning time machine may still be light years away, engineers are already experimenting with ultrasonic waves to move and manipulate small objects, unquote. Therefore, the tech is already being trialed in modern manufacturing, they are using ultrasonic force fields to fix parts, and in the medical field, they are even using this same tech to separate healthy versus unhealthy cells. So, oh, I wish I had mine here, it would have been perfect, but you know what I mean. Anyways, let's move on. Number eight, virtual reality. This is another science fiction idea that I probably don't even need to reinforce with examples because it's so popular. Ever heard of Ready Player One or The Matrix, Tomorrow and Tomorrow? Has anyone tried that game, Richie's Plank Experience, where you go up really high in a building with like virtual glasses on and you have to climb on a plank? Like, huh. it's insanely convincing as proven by the massive bruise I attained while playing it one time, like I was so convinced I was so high up that like when I started to fall, my body just threw itself to the ground and I just like ate it. It was awful. But that just goes to show virtual reality has arrived and it is also a here to stay. While most of it relies on our brain's ability to connect the dots when we interact with objects in this space, one day we might be able to feel an object when we touch it or smell the bakery we're walking past or even feel the sun on our skin. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. We're so close. Now that we know VR is achievable, the possibilities are endless. Number seven, survey. Surveillance. Oh, this one's a little creepy. Sorry. 1984 was one of the coolest, most disturbing books I've ever read, and I was also not prepared for it. Like, it wasn't what I was expecting. George Orwell's bleak dystopian novel 1984 is about a man who lives in a totalitarian world where his every move is watched by cunning surveillance Big Brother and rebels by falling in love. Ever heard the term Big Brother is watching you or newspeak? Well, that's where this comes from. But by far the most terrifying part of this book is the feeling of being watched by all sides. With like the fact that these characters can never escape it. With phones filming everything and cameras everywhere, the kind of surveillance Orwell mentions just might already be here. GPS tracking and NSA surveillance have also been some new additions. Even our emails, calls, web history can be monitored beyond our knowledge. Cookies and caches also aid in the surveillance as well, giving marketers information about our interests. You can even get banned on social media, TikTok being the biggest thing right now, for saying a word wrong. Doesn't sound too different, does it? That's kind of creepy though. People can get randomly banished from TikTok and it kind of throws me off. Anyways, censorship. 
Hmm. Number six, nano jeans. And we are back with yet another Doctor Who reference. I wish I could talk about the TARDIS being real, but it's just, it's just not. It's, it just isn't. But I wish it will one day be. Anyways, for all my Whovians out there, you might know what episode I'm talking about when I say, Are you my mummy? Creepy, I know. But in this episode, the first season of the revival with Christopher Eccleston, nano jeans were alien tech that helped heal injuries. Tiny microscopic bots that could work together and heal injuries. Well, even though they don't fly, these actually exist now. According to MIT, they have created cell sized robots that can navigate and detect issues in their environment. Now imagine that environment is actually your lungs or your liver or your veins or your eyes. Yes, they can actually be inserted inside the human body. This gives scientists hope that a future where disease detection doesn't take months of waiting in line, but just takes mere minutes. Number five, hoverboards. Seriously, who didn't want one of these? When the world saw Marty McFly across the streets behind cars in the future, we all wished the same thing. We, we wanted a hoverboard. Grab your tissues and sit down because our dream just might be coming true. Who else would be the first one to ride a real hoverboard than Tony Hawk? Maybe Michael J. Fox. Honestly, is there anyone else who deserves this? I don't know. We salute you. Now, you may have thought I was talking about the kind that uses your weight to balance, like you know the ones that still roll, but this one is actually hovering above the ground. It hovers about an inch and can travel up to 15 miles per hour. It's called the Hendo Hoverboard and I need it to come to stores ASAP Rocky because how else am I going to get to work? I am so bored of the TTC, let me tell you. Number four, autonomous vehicles. From the Minority Report, Total Recall, Judge Dredd, Logan's Run, Isaac Asimov, as well as to more recently, Upload on Amazon Prime, have all mentioned autonomous cars. Cars that don't require a human driver to get anywhere quickly, efficiently, and reliably. The state of Nevada in the US was the first place to allow self-driving cars on the road, confirming that autonomous vehicles are here. It does still sound like they have a lot of bugs to work out, but still, hey, they used to just be fantasy. So far, Self-driving cars have been involved in fewer accidents compared to traditional vehicles. Ford, Audi, and of course Tesla have already manufactured these cars, and Musk has sold thousands. So they are definitely out there, but it still might be a while yet before you see someone next to you without their hands on the wheel on the road or even in the back seat. Personally, I'm gung ho for the idea so long as everybody is doing it. It's either one or the other. Like it's either all or nothing. Though the possibility of less congestion, safer driving, and no more panicking when parallel parking is around the corner in 2018 and an autonomous vehicle fatally struck a pedestrian, making people question how safe they can be. But of course, like nothing's perfect. So we'll see. We'll see. Number three, video calling. One of the things I'm incredibly grateful for that we had over the past few years was video calling. Nothing can fully replace in-person human interaction, but getting to see video proof of my loved ones kept me going as I'm sure it did for most of us. We are pretty damn lucky even while going through one of the largest global events. Video calls have been featured in every sci-fi show since science fiction could be brought up. It was actually first tested by AT&T at the World Fair in New York City in 1964. They used a picture phone which invited the public to call a special exhibit at Disneyland. Obviously, times have rapidly changed since then, and though signals still may glitch at times with Zoom, Skype, WhatsApp, FaceTime, etc., there are so many ways to video call. Heck, the reason I was able to even teach from home this year was because of video calling. So if this came true, what's the next step? Personally, I'm hoping for the holographic communications like from Star Trek and Spy Kids. You know, like the arm thing? That'd be cool. That's that's the dream I'm still holding on to. Number two, artificial intelligence. What sci-fi movie, book, whatever hasn't talked about artificial intelligence? Like all the way back to Frankenstein. You almost can't have one without it. There always needs to be a terrifyingly intelligent computer that operates autonomously, either good or evil. There's been Jarvis, Ex Machina, Westworld, HAL 9000 from 2001 Space Odyssey. The list goes on. But guess what? It's happening. Sophia the AI may still look more robot than human, but she's been touring the world speaking all over the place. She was created by Hanson Robotics in Hong Kong and has even been on The Tonight Show. Seiya is an AI teacher who was designed by Japanese engineers to teach to children in the outer reaches of Japan. These are the extreme versions, but there are even AI powered algorithms for the stock market, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. It is here, but we still seem to be in control of it for now. Though we are closer to it one day surpassing us than we might think. AI will be as capable if not more than humans in most tasks by 2060. Add another 76 years and experts think that AI will take over all human jobs. Number one, the internet. Well, welcome to the internet. You're on it right now. How far down are you in the YouTube spiral today, friend?
friends? Well, welcome to the internet, the most revolutionary invention of the 20th century, or perhaps ever. There is a little bit of everything all the time. Access to more information, good and bad, true and false. But did you know that the idea of the internet can actually be found in some of Isaac Asimov's stories? He used to refer to a machine that had information about everything and everyone. You only needed to type in what you needed to search, and boom, the answer was at your fingertips. But that's just one example. John Brunner in his 1975 novel The Shockwave Rider talks about a massive computer system plus hacking viruses and PC infections. Then there's Mark Twain who also considered the idea in a short story from the London Times in 1904. The Telectroscope, a global communication network was what he called it. So clearly humankind has been waiting and dreaming of endless information accessible with the click of a button and here it finally is. But with clickbaiting and so much demand for information, most often it's not about presenting what's right so long as you're the first one doing it. That just got pretty meta, didn't it? Woo! And that was our top 10 list of inventions straight out of science fiction. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, or you know, go for a walk. Go outside. Um, do what you want to do. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. Until next time, take care.